Hello everyone, I'm Amy and welcome into Book of Magic. Today we're going to be doing a paint party in our journals and this is a step-by-step -step tutorial where you can use a template which is called the Cozy Mushroom and you can get this in my Etsy shop for $1.99. I will leave the link in the description box in case you want to go there and download that. Then you just print it out and I'm going to show you how to transfer it in the lesson when we get there. So um, grab your supplies. Uh, we're gonna be using acrylics. I'm gonna list what I use in the description box as well. And uh, let's head on over to our paint desk so we can get this party started. See you there. Today I'm working in my eight and a half by 11 journal. This is Bristol paper or Bristol board. This is a Book of Magic journal, and um, these are coming out very soon, so look out for them in the Etsy shop. Uh, this is the best paper, in my opinion, for painting of any kind, even watercolor. Today we're going to be using acrylic, though, and we're going to do our paint party uh, image. We're gonna transfer it into our journals and we're going to paint this little cutie. So the way we do a transfer is we're gonna use carbon paper. And let me show you my, the type of carbon paper that I get is this one, Por Porlon. Um, you can get any type of carbon paper, doesn't matter. Uh, this one is the one that they have most commonly at Office Depot, which is where I pick mine up from, but I'm sure you can order all different brands online. So, it's a 8.5 by 11 size, but I just happen to have like these pieces cut up from another project that I did, so I'm going to use that. And I'm going to need some painter's tape. It can be... The blue tape or this yellow one is pretty good. This is automotive refinish masking tape. We just need to hold our picture in place and get it on there. Um, hmm. I think I'll tape it to the page next to it. needs to be taped in place but you also need to be able to lift it up so that you can put the carbon paper underneath and this is um eight and a half inches high five and a half inches wide so you'll need at least that big of a page to work on you can also transfer these to canvas so we're going to place these with the dark black side down underneath and now we're going to trace the image with a pencil. A lot of times I will use a color, colored pencil to do this so that I can see what I've actually traced over. All right, so before you untape your image, you wanna check back and see, and I missed this bottom line here. So I'm gonna get that in really quickly. Put everything back. This is why I love working in a journal and I can spin it all around. Okay, I think that's everything. I'm going to be using several different sizes and styles of brush that are medium to small and this big one here is as big as I'm gonna get. And now I'm gonna mix 
a red for my mushroom hat. I'm giving, I'm adding a little, a little yellow so that the red is a little more warm. More of like a tomato red. Because the red that I'm starting with, it's got a cool undertone. And now I'm just filling in the entire hat. I'm calling it a hat. I don't know if that's what it's, a cap. Filling in the entire cap. <laughs> so now I'm going to mix a brown. And I'm doing that by adding red and yellow to make a, an orange and then adding just a little bit of blue to it as it develops and I get the desired brown that I like. I just keep going back and forth and adding in either red, yellow, or brown to get the shade that I like. And then once I get this together, I am going to um, start painting the leaves from the top to the bottom. And I made this brown really warm, like a reddish brown, kind of like a sienna. And so I find a good place to rest my hand and I start filling in these leaves. And they're, they're kind of small, so I'm using a brush that's on the smaller side and has a pointier uh, tip to it. And I'm holding my brush towards the very end of it so that I can have more control in these little curvy spaces that I'm filling in. I have the most control when I hold it like this. So that brush was proving to be a little too big. So I switched to a really tiny one. I don't know what number this brush is. Um, but it's it's on the tiny side As I fill in each leaf, I'm going to vary the shades of brown by um, adding in yellow and mixing it up. I'm adding yellow just straight to the page, straight to the leaf, and kind of mixing it and blending it in there. I like the kind of messiness of this or the just kind of random colors that appear and, and the shade just kind of starts blending into different colors like a leaf actually looks. So this one I got a, a pretty good bit of yellow and um, using this small brush it's it's really easy to get into all these little curves. Um, I, I put the yellow straight onto the leaf and the brown that was still left in my brush is what created this kind of yellow ochre color. And so now I'll just go back and forth adding brown and yellow to each leaf as I go down the page. I kind of want to um, 
go back and forth between making a darker brown leaf and then a lighter leaf. Then I'll make another darker one and then I'll make a bit of a lighter one as I go down the page. This just adds interest and keeps your eye moving around on the art piece. So as you can see here, I finished all my leaves and now I'm using this scratch paper to test some colors. And I want to create a uh, kind of like a taupe. I'm thinking about a mushroom and what a mushroom looks like. And I want to get this kind of light brown taupe color, gray brown. and. Um, so I'm mixing some, I'm adding some yellow to the brown that I already had. And now I'm going to add white to it. And this is going to go underneath the cap. So it's the underside of the cap. I want it to be light enough so that when I paint, I can still see those lines that I've drawn underneath the cap. I want to be able to still see those so that I can um, bring those out later in one of the next steps. I don't want to lose them completely. But if you happen to paint this area and you lose the lines, you can always refer to the template that you traced and um, you can just look at it and add your own lines. Or when the whole thing's dry, you could actually retrace the lines, but that's kind of tricky to get it exactly right. So I'm taking the same taupe that I just had and I'm adding even more white to it so it gets a few shades lighter than what I just painted. And this is going to cover uh, the face and also the whole stem. And I'm just taking my time filling this in and enjoying the process. And if things get a little too tight around the details, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush so that I can get in there. And I feel like I wanted it to be a little bit lighter, so I mixed some more white in and I tested it over on my uh, scrap piece of paper. It's always a really good idea when you're mixing colors to test them out on your scrap so that you don't put something on your painting that you don't like. So I'm gonna go around the eyes and then paint over the eyebrows, the nose and the mouth. I'm going to paint over the top eyelid as well. Carrying that lighter color all down the whole stem. <clears throat> I'm 
using this little bit of a, a bigger size brush to fill in the larger areas and then when I get close to where there's little details I might switch to a smaller brush or just use the very tip of this one going back and putting a, a little bit of a second coat to get an even tone on the face because I was seeing some brush strokes and I, I want to try and get it as even as possible without painting over the features so much that I can't see them anymore So now I'm going to uh, just use a pencil, regular pencil, and kind of go over the eyebrows and all the facial features so that I, I bring them back out and I don't lose them. Just lightly sketching over the top of all the lines that are already there. I am adding this kind of like a medium green for the eyes and I'm going to paint around that circle that's inside the eye so just the outer circle of the eye I'm painting green and then I'm going to paint the inside circle black and I'm using a very tiny brush for this. You could also use um, a marker or a micron pen, something that has a very fine tip to do this. That would look really good too. So if I start to lose the line that I have traced on there, I'm going to refer back to the template and look at where these half circles are placed in the eye and get them as close as I can to that. So that's really good to have that next to you as a reference too. And just a tiny little dot of red for the lips. I'm going back to that first warm reddish brown that I used for that first leaf up top and I'm going to use it for my little acorn cup here, the bottom part of it. And I'm being careful to not lose the shape of the little hands. They look kind of look like little mittens. And to paint carefully around those, I've got to use a really small brush and hold it close to the tip so that I can have the most control possible with it. I'm um, adding some, oh, I'm, I'm filling in this little area that I missed earlier. And now I'm going to add some yellow to the brown. 
and do the outer edge. These are the same colors that I use for the leaves. So I'm carrying that throughout the painting. Keeping the same color palette throughout um, helps to unify the whole look of the painting and, and makes it easy to look at for the eye. Very appealing. We're not jumping all over the place and adding a whole bunch of colors. And it still looks really good. It's still varied enough that you don't think, oh my gosh, everything looks the same on this painting. I'm adding just these tiny little dots. I added a little bit of white to the color I was using. I'm just using these two browns back and forth in this little acorn cup. And then with a little bit of white. I'm mixing some green and uh, I'm mixing some green by using yellow and blue and I want this to be like a, a lighter yellowy green so that means I'm gonna put more yellow than blue into it and uh, just a hint of red give it like a, a, a bit of a brownish green and uh, this is gonna be for my grass down at the bottom I'm gonna create two different shades of green here in the next few minutes and this kind of lighter yellowy green is uh it's going to be for all of this grassy area down here And of course, I'm going to test it out to make sure that it's the shade that I really like, that I'm going for. And it is, so we're going to just start adding it and filling it in. Fill it all in down towards the bottom. To add some variation here in these greens, I'm going to take some yellow and just put it straight onto the paper and it's kind of mixing in with that previous green that's still in my brush and so it's making this really pretty mixture and variation in greens. And I'll just keep grabbing some yellow about that much and then just kind of tapping it on and then just really blending it in, in different directions. Just want it to look kind of messy. And give the impression of blades of grass. For our background color, I want to go darker and um, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a green that's very deep by using more blue than yellow. So these colors are, um, they're by Chromacryl and I'll list the... Um, all the details in the description but the blue is it's kind of like a, a phthalo blue and um, I'm adding some black to that mixture so I want to make like this a dark dark turquoise with the blue and yellow and then I add a little bit of black to make it even darker
I can't be um, precise on my measurements of each color. I'm just showing you how I do it. I, I just go back and forth until I get what I like. And then I always test it out on my scrap piece of paper to make sure that's what I want. So I had already mixed this color previously. And actually it's from a couple days ago. And so it's starting to get really thick. So you'll see me adding some water to it here because it's just super thick. It's a really heavy body paint, plus it's been sitting. So um, the paint that you're using, you might not need to keep adding water to it to get it to move across the page. But that's why I am going to do that a few times. Anyways, I like the the darker color for contrast in the background. And so I'm going to fill the whole background in from top to bottom. And I'm going to turn the journal in order for me to be able to rest my hand in certain places where I'm not sitting my hand on the paint. And in order to get certain angles um, easier with the paintbrush. So... Inside the really tight areas, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. And then when there's a bigger area to cover, I'll use a bigger brush. So because of the dark background, I've decided to paint over the arms, the outside lines of the arms, but I'm going to keep where the hand and the little bit of the arm is inside the stem. I just think it looks better. With a lighter background, you can keep the arms. And, and towards the bottom, I'm just keeping that same brush stroke, choppy, that looks like grass, and I'm carrying it up to the edge of the other greens. Okay, so now we're all done with the main portion of the painting. And I love how it's looking. So we're on to detail work and we're going to be using Micron pens. Numbers three and zero zero five i'll list these in the description and this is the tiniest one we're going to uh trace over all the lines that are already there for us and i've already filled in the eyebrows with just pencil so i think i'm gonna leave them like that I like that the eyebrows are not too dark, so that's why I I filled them in with pencil. So I'm just going over each eyelash. And over the little tiny nose and the little tiny lips, I'm just tracing over the lines that are already there. This is why I love the template. And then I turn my journal and my hand so that I can get a natural curve. And I outline the entire face. This detail work is really important. It's going to make everything pop. And I'm just going over the top of each line that's underneath the cap and this is really cute because it comes out looking like her hair I 
I'm turning the journal again and allowing my hand to rest on the table to get a, a nice even line across. I'm going to outline and fill in these little mittens. This is the number three micron. It's a little bit bigger. It covers more area than the one I was using previously for the tiny little eyelashes. So I'm adding the veins into each leaf. I make that one line from the stem all the way to the tippy top tip of each leaf and then one from the center outwards on each leaf. And this is a jelly roll white pen, a gel pen, the number eight. This is my favorite white pen right now, and I always get it started by marking it on my hand. I'm outlining the little mittens so that we can see them better. And with the same pen, I'm going to come up here and Add the highlights in each eye, same spot for both eyes. Switching back to that same little brush, I am going to grab some white and add in all the little white spots here. I want them to have jagged edges. I want the some of them to overlap between the red and the green. So some of the ones at the top are actually sticking up off of the cap and overlapping onto the green. And then as they come down towards the face, they get a little smaller. Now we're gonna make some really cute rosy cheeks and I love using chalk pastels just with a Q-tip to rub some of this really pretty pink color onto the cheeks and I'm using a little bit of a circular motion as I rub it onto the paper. I'm gonna add a few layers to get it as dark as I want it. Using a few different shades of brown with these Prismacolor pencils, I'm going to add some shading and um, some depth to the face and the stem. And I'm first making some swatches on my scrap paper to make sure these are the correct colors for me. And then I'm gonna get started. I will leave the um, the exact colors in the description in case you're interested.
So after all of this shading is done, I feel like I need to add some more pink to the cheeks so that they will stand out. So I'm giving her a little more rouge here. We are almost done and I want to add this last highlight so we're going to use a bigger brush and I'm going to create a lighter version of the background color by just taking that background color and adding some white to it. And I'm going to use a dry brush technique which means I'm going to wipe most of the paint off of my brush and then apply it by just kind of skimming the surface. And I'm gonna add it in between and in the spots where there's just uh, space. So I'm kind of filling in space with this little scratchy highlight. I'm just kind of scratching it, scratching the surface. It feels like when you try and uh, wipe most of the paint off of your brush. So when I run out, I'm going to apply a little bit more paint and then wipe most of it off and go back in. So I'm getting some more. I'm going to load up my brush, then wipe it off and now scratch just gently skimming the surface of the page i don't want to press too hard i can play around with it and fill in these areas i really love how this looks Once that's dry, we're going to take our white jelly roll pin and come back in and draw some swirly lines to represent the wind that's kicking all these leaves up. I'm just going for it. Now, if, if I make a line and I don't like it, I can actually just wet it a little bit and smear it right off if I catch it pretty quick. But I'm just going for it and I'm kind of following the, the direction of each leaf and thinking about how the wind would be moving through to push the leaf that way. And we are done. Thank you for joining me today in this tutorial, this paint party of the Cozy Mushroom. I hope you enjoyed it. Please consider subscribing and liking this video. I'll be back every Friday with a paint party just like this one and a new template. See you again at Book of Magic. Bye-bye.